Hello everyone, what's up? I am here on holidays. No, I'm actually really on holidays. Um, I decided to come to Portugal to visit my family for around a week and I'm meeting them here in the south of Spain for a couple of days. But the thing is, I have to finish a manuscript, a research paper that I am writing and that I'm currently working on. And I decided that I would talk to you about what a manuscript is and what a paper actually is and its importance for science and for a scientist's life. Basically, scientific papers is the way that we share our research with the rest of the scientific community and with the world. And there is a whole process that goes from us having our results until we actually have our paper with our results and uh, all our study published and available for everyone to see. What happens is you do your experiments or your observations or your tests or whatever it is your work consists on. And once you have all the results, then you can start writing your research paper, which is basically kind of a, it's an article where you explain everything you've done. Usually it's divided by parts. It has an abstract, which is kind of a summary where you explain everything you've done in kind of a paragraph. Then you have the introduction where you explain everything that is already known, that is important for someone who has no idea of what's happening, to know what is already done in the field and what they need to know in order to understand why you are doing the research you're doing and why you're doing what you're doing. Then you have the methods, the methodology, and where you explain step by step, more or less, everything you've done. Basically, methodology is a part where you have to write things down in a way that anyone can reproduce your study. And then you have your results, where you just basically show your results, statistical analysis or your tests or your experiments or whatever it may be. And then you have a discussion part where you kind of try to make sense out of your results within the framework of what is already known in the field and also relating things to each other. And of course, you can also and usually you do refer to previous studies. So once you've written your research paper, you have to choose a scientific journal where you want your paper to be published in. And a scientific journal is kind of like a magazine. It looks just like a magazine and just that inside it is composed of all the research papers that were chosen to be published on that month. So you have general journals where you can basically find papers from many different fields, from biology, physics, mathematics, medicine, all different fields that are relevant at the moment. And then you also have more specific journals, journals for medicine, for just neurosciences, for marine biology, for microbiology. There's tons, tons and tons of journals. And there are journals which are considered better than others. And then you have to kind of choose to which in which journal you want to publish your research paper. And of course, the more important a journal is, the less likely it is that you will be able to publish in said journal. This is how it works. You finish your paper, you choose a journal because you think it would be perfect. This is a perfect journal for you to publish your paper. You have to submit it online and the editor of the journal has to go through it, like just go through your paper and see, yeah, this is material for our, our journal or it's not. If he thinks it's not, he will immediately send you an answer saying your paper has been rejected. And when this happens, you can already send it to yet another journal and repeat the process. However, if the editor thinks, yeah, this could be interesting for our journal, then he will send the paper to two or three referees usually scientists within the same field of the research in question. The author will never know who they are, so it's anonymous. So the referees will know who you are, so the author of the paper, but they do, but the author will never know who the referees are. And then the referees have to 
read the paper, go through it very thoroughly, point out what they like, what they don't like, what they think is well not well explained, if and in the end say whether or not they think that the paper should be published in that journal or not. You just need one of the referees to not like your paper for it to probably not be accepted for publishing in that journal. Sometimes they might also come back to you saying it would be better maybe if you would add this, maybe you should do some extra experiments, maybe you should do some extra observations, maybe if you would discuss this a bit differently we would accept it, and in which case you are allowed to make these changes and then resubmit it again. And then it will be again sent to the reviewers and they will, yeah, yeah, okay, now I think it's good. Or they might say, yeah, no, um, no, no, we don't think it's good. Um, even with all these changes, I think it should not be published. If all the referees say, okay, we all agree that this is published, then it's published in this journal. That's how it goes. I thought I should explain to you people how science works and every scientist has to write research papers. It's how scientists are evaluated, actually. The quality of a scientist is usually evaluated by the quality of and amount of their publications. I'm now writing my manuscript at the moment, my, the first one of my PhD, and I just needed a pause and I decided to, well, why not explain to you what a manuscript actually is, what a research paper actually is. It's not all diving and snorkeling and fun. There's a lot, a lot of analyzing and writing and frustration and dealing with rejection. <laughs> so yeah, science. This was it. Don't forget to like it and to subscribe if you want to see more science slash marine related content. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.